So hopefully you're at the right session. This is design and evaluation on the edge, um, supported by the AES uh, Design and Evaluation Special Interest Group. This is, a, is part four of a four part series um, on power, failure and washing machines. Um, before we start today, I'd like to acknowledge country and the traditional custodians and owners of the many Aboriginal lands we're meeting on today. Um, I'm on Wurundjeri country here in Melbourne. Um, and uh, I'd like to pay my respect to elders, past and present. Any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander colleagues with us on the call, you're very welcome and thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Nick Vogelpohl, for anyone who doesn't know me, um, and we are going to be talking about design, learning and evaluation in multi-stakeholder collaborations today. So if that's not the session uh, you thought you were at. This is a good time to leave. Um, but if you are interested just by the title, please stay. Um, we are at the end of today's session, we're going to be joined um, by my colleague Jess Dart, who is going to take us through a bit of um, feedback and um, planning for the next kind of design and learning sprint. So if you enjoyed this or you didn't enjoy it, we can have your say and, um, and let us know what we can do next. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity to catch up with the other um, uh, sessions this week. They're all available to be watched online. Um, our colleagues Matt and uh, Joe and Shani have done some really great sessions on totally different topics. So um, do catch up with them if you get the opportunity to. Okay, so design, learning and evaluation in multi-stakeholder collaborations. As many words as we could fit into a title. Um, I said my name's Nick Vogelpohl and join, joining me today is Cameron Willis and we're from Day 4 Projects. Um, I'm just putting this up here so that if you are interested in some of this work that we do in partnerships, platforms, collaborations, alliances, please do reach out. We're always really interested to hear from people who are working in this space or practitioners or wherever you come from, um, as we are really interested in this space ourselves. Um, I'm just going to take us through a bit of an agenda for the day. Um, there's, there's way too much on there, so hopefully the recording will stand and, um, and we'll have an opportunity to um, to go over some of these topics later. But Cam's going to take us through a kind of introduction, I suppose, to what we mean by multi-stakeholder platforms and partnerships. And then we were really taken by the topic of this kind of design and evaluation coming together and colliding. So we're going to talk a bit about the foundations of collaboration and how they um, meet and echo and collide with um, the foundations of design. I'm going to talk a bit about the role of design in multi-stakeholder platforms and partnerships and it'd be really nice to test some of those ideas with you on the call today. We're really excited we've got um, we've got our friend and colleague um, Dr Melanie Pascot here too. We're going to do a bit of a Q&A um, so if you've got questions from Mel or you like asking questions of panels that will be good for you and then we're going to try and do a bit of an exercise um, and get to know one another. I know lots of people have their um, cameras off and, um, and that's totally fine. When we get to that exercise bit, it might be nice to switch them on to talk to one another um, in some breakout rooms, but we'll do a quick session there. And as I said, um, Jess is gonna take us through a kind of feedback um, and uh, a looking forward session at the end of today. So do stick around for that um, if you're here. We'll finish with some practical tips um, to get started in this space and that will be the session. I'm gonna hand over to Cam now. Thanks, Nick, um, and hello, everybody. Um, and my welcome to everybody that's joining us today uh, on the call. Um, as Nick said, my name's Cam, uh, and, and I work with Day4 as well on all things multi-stakeholder platforms, partnerships, and collaborations. And I suppose that word collaboration is is kind of the the overarching word that we have for all of those different words that that get used uh, within this space, be they partnerships. Uh, platforms, alliances, coalitions, collaboratives, um, all these different words that we, that, we, that we find ourselves hearing and using within this space. And you'll have other words as well that you're, you're familiar with, things like interdisciplinary practices and cross-sectoral collaborations, intersectoral collaborations as well. Um, so lots of words that, that, that fit under that umbrella of collaboration. And I'm sure for many people uh, that are joining us today, be you uh, evaluators or designers or researchers or consultants or policy makers and practitioners in all sorts of different ways. You'll have found yourselves or find yourselves working in collaborations all the time, working in partnerships. It's kind of become this way that we find ourselves working. And so I'm sure many of you will be familiar with the the trials and tribulations of, of working in partnership and working in collaboration. Uh, and as Nick said, we think there's a really interesting set of synergies and sweet spots that exist 
uh, between the worlds of collaboration, between the worlds of design and between the worlds of learning and evaluation as well. So we hope that that's a shared interest for the folks on the call today. Uh, this definition from the partnering uh, initiative is a really nice one around well, what do we mean by, by partnerships and platforms, uh, and I won't read it out, um, other than to note that really at the core, regardless of what the words are being used, at the core uh, of, of collaboration is this commitment and belief in, in collaborative advantage, uh, that we can achieve more together by working together than what we can by working alone. And so these mechanisms of collaboration provide us with the tools to actually share our, our skills, our resources, our talents, uh, their reach to different groups and communities in ways that will actually help us achieve a shared ambition or a shared goal. And it's not to say that we, we won't necessarily derive things for ourselves along the way. In fact, we have to be able to do that. that these, these collaborations have to be able to serve our self-interest. Uh, but there's something about the creation of something together, uh, which is that collaborative advantage, which is why we're so interested in this way of working uh, and why we think other people are as well. When we think about collaboration, and a lot of the work that we do in collaboration can kind of fit within these, these four, four buckets of, of thought or lenses or areas of coming into collaboration. Um, and when we're thinking about designing collaborations as well, these areas are particularly important. The first one is around the problem. So what is the reason uh, why this collaboration exists? So what, why are we bringing a, a group of people together? What's the problem that we're seeking to solve? Um, for many of the problems that we work in, um, they're complex problems. I won't go down the rabbit hole of what makes a, a problem complex too much, um, other than to note some examples. So things like reducing plastic in the ocean or tackling poverty or helping communities be resilient in the face of natural disasters and recovering from natural disasters. So those kinds of complex problems around which collaborations are really valuable um, for, for addressing. That's the first sort of bucket of area that we work in. The second thing that we might choose to look at is thinking about what's the type of collaboration that we have in front of us or what's the type of collaboration that we might need um, in order to advance uh, uh, towards solving that problem. Some of those words I mentioned, partnerships and alliances and coalitions, they, they fit within this, but there's other ways of thinking about types as well. And there's three that, that, that we often find ourselves looking at. The first type um, can be around the, the, the function. So what is the function of what this collaboration might do? Um, is this about a collaboration that's going to be investing in knowledge exchange? Is it about doing research? Is it about informing policy and practice? Is it about transforming systems? What's the function of what this collaboration is setting out to achieve? Uh, the second type might be about the structure. So who's in this collaboration? Is this a research policy and practice collaboration? Is it a public, private, civil society collaboration? So what's the structure? Who's in this that's going to help us advance our shared mission? And then finally, we can think about the type of collaboration in terms of its goals. Uh, so what is, this, uh, what is this trying to achieve? Um, is this collaboration about designing innovations? Um, is this collaboration about implementing innovations? Is it about learning and evaluation about what's happening in the world and what's happening about the innovations that we're creating together? So that's the types. Activities of collaboration is this third bucket that gets lots of attention. Um, and if we are uh, evaluators or designers um, or other people that are involved in collaborations, we might find ourselves working on shared projects together. They're very real expressions of what it means to work in collaboration with each other. Um, there's also the, I suppose, invisible work of collaborations as well, the invisible work that happens within partnerships. And sometimes we don't even know that we're doing it. This is all of that. Um, coming together, um, convening spaces, holding spaces together, finding areas where we agree and disagree and resolving conflict, um, building up a sense of where each other is going and what are our shared interests and our shared beliefs, et cetera. So all of that invisible activity that happens within collaborations as well. And the fourth bucket that we find ourselves looking, we find ourselves thinking about when designing collaborations is around the foundations of a collaboration. So what makes for a really strong and effective way of partnering? Um, other folks might call these critical success factors. And these are things that are needed in order to be a, an, an effective partnership. Things like trust and reciprocity, mutual accountability, uh, shared vision and shared direction of where we're going. So those critical factors that underlie the success of what our collaboration might look like. And I suppose when we start thinking about, and when we started thinking about those critical success factors uh, and what makes for a really strong partnership, it struck us as being that it, it's so similar and there's so much overlap between that world 
um, and the world of what makes for good design. So on the left-hand side, you can see some of the words that I've just mentioned around what makes for effective partnering. Um, so really clear, collaborative leadership, collaborative governance, um, mutual accountability and transparency, um, places where participation uh, and equity and representation are, are lived values of the work of what a partnership is doing, um, where there is shared vision um, and shared objectives and a collective commitment to those uh, to those objectives and trust and goodwill, et cetera, et cetera, the list goes on. So what makes for an effective partnership on the left-hand side? And this whole series of, of, of sessions that's been run this week has been about design in part and design and evaluation, but we're thinking about what makes for good design. Well, good design is inclusive. It's respectful, it's participative, it's iterative. There's a clear purpose where those people that are involved in design uh, uh, share that shared purpose and, and understand what that shared purpose is. Um, equality and reciprocity and, and trust and respect are, are values that are lived and breathed throughout the design process. So it really struck us as when we were thinking about the work that we do um, in collaboration, and I'm sure your experiences of working in collaboration, the synergies that you find between that world and the world of design. And so how can we then think about maybe applying some of that design thinking, design concepts, design theory to the work that we might do when we're working in collaboration with each other as designers, as evaluators and, and others. So what we find is that the, the concepts of design are really sort of woven through and threaded through all of the work and all the stages um, of what a collaboration might go through, the life cycle, I suppose, of what, what a collaborative initiative might look like. So practically that might mean we might use some of our design thinking and design skills and design concepts when we're designing the partnership itself, where we might need to empathise with those folks that we're seeking to bring together. Um, what are their needs? What are our collective needs? What are the problems that we're going to seek to work on together? We might need to gather insights from across all of those different perspectives. So design thinking at that early stage is, is hugely valuable. We might use design thinking and design principles when we're thinking about designing innovations themselves. So this newness, um, when we're ideating and surfacing and bring, bringing together spaces where people can do that collectively, new ways of tackling problems that, we, that, that are shared amongst us. We might be designing for implementation, and this is where concepts around prototyping that are that are sort of so inherent within design thinking is so relevant to the work that might happen within a multi-stakeholder partnership or platform. How can we prototype within a partnership the kinds of solutions that we think are going to be most valuable for the problems we're seeking to address? And then finally, designing for learning and evaluation. Um, again, sort of that that third bucket of area that we're interested in, that that, that evaluation component, where we're testing the solutions that we've come up with and maybe using uh, partnerships and platforms and collaborations as vehicles for agreeing on what actually do we want to learn about when we're implementing some of these solutions? How are we going to know if some of these things are effective? What are the evidence that, what's the evidence that we each need in order to understand the effectiveness and effects uh, of the interventions or innovations we're creating and putting out into the world? So, for us, design is really threaded through all of the work that we do in partnerships, including um, in the work that we do as evaluators of partnerships. Um, that might all sound a bit theoretical, a bit esoteric, a bit nebulous. And so to take us from, I suppose, that very high level view of, of design and partnerships and evaluation, we thought it'd be really nice to have a conversation with Mel Senex going to take us through that. Thanks, Cam. Um, uh, yeah, so as, as Cam said, I'm going to um, introduce my colleague, um, Dr. Mel Prescott. And, um, and Mel is a senior research fellow at the Australian National University and also at the Australian Prevention Partnership Centre. Um, I'm going to start with a, a kind of couple of questions for Mel. Um, if you think of questions that you'd like to ask Mel, or, or to either of us actually, um, please do put them in the chat um, and we can keep the conversation going. Um, Mel, this one's pre prepared, so I'm going to. I'm going to read it out as, as it's written, but I wonder if you could start with telling us a bit about your experiences of evaluating partnerships or other collaborative entities. Thanks so much, Nick, and thanks, Cam, too. Thanks, everyone, and hello. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is a planted question. I have thought about it beforehand. And, you know, when I think about evaluating, evaluations that I've been um, involved in in the past, most of them have really just looked specifically at programs or interventions or policies as opposed to looking at the partnership itself or the collaboration itself. And so it's actually been really new for me to think about 
design thinking and co-design and even bringing in a systems thinking lens to my work. So yeah, I just wanted to share a brief example of um, an evaluation that I've recently completed on a past piece of work. So I completed a work, uh, a piece of work that looked at the influence of nutrition related inequities in Australia quite a few years ago. And that project had some pretty big claims in it. You know, we're going to make these big scale policy changes to the food system within three to five years. You know, we're going to have all these big changes happening within the system. And what happened was that didn't happen. <laughs> and, you know, I can be quite idealistic with my work and whatnot and sort of go, oh, you know, we're not making change in research or evaluation. You know, why are we seeing these changes? What is it about it? And so I've actually just recently in the, couple, the last couple of years had an opportunity to come back and work on some projects um, that really incorporate learning and evaluation re and reflective practices. So I use this particular project in particular to look back and say, well, what was it that prevented us from making change? What about the partnership and this collaborative effort hindered the process? And so I went through a very structured sort of process and I'm really happy to send the framework that I used to go through that. It's um, being published now um, to reflect on who was in the room. Did we have the right collaborators in the first place? Did they even have a remit to make change? No, they didn't. You know, that was one of our um, big sort of learnings from that. We didn't necessarily have all of the right people in the room at the right level. Um, and looking back, we had a big focus on understanding the system, but we didn't focus so much on change within the system. It was more describing and understanding. And so we really needed to bring in a really strong implementation focus. So it would have been really great to have brought in a theory of change. I know I'm talking very abstractly here, so sorry about that. And I'm really happy to share the work, but I guess the point that I wanted to share was that in going backwards and engaging in this reflective process with some of my collaborators, there was about 15 involved in this process and some took part in it, some didn't. It was interesting to see people's um, responses to going back and reflecting. Some people were um, very happy to look back and um, explore their blind spots and you know, kind of look back and go, oh, we really didn't do those things that we set out to do and why. Um, other people felt very uncomfortable about reflecting upon a process and publishing on it. So we did publish our reflective process as well. Um, because I think, you know, when we come into different projects and whatnot, we kind of, we might forget that learning lens. I certainly did. And that mm. reflection lens. So, yeah. um, yeah, yeah, I like that. It's, it's, it's interesting yeah. though, listening to you talking about this kind of a, the evaluation of it, I suppose, because in on reflection, you're doing lots of kind of learning cycles, continuous learning loops, um, you know, and, and I suppose I'm interested in your take then, like in some of the commentary that we've been given today, is there, do you see that link between, I suppose, design-led approaches and, and evaluation, particularly in this work, in the partnership example you're giving, do you see any use for them? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, in particular that kind of co-design focus of bringing lots of people in and generating a shared understanding of a project, you know, making sure everyone's on the same page. There's a lot of respect for different people at different levels of the hierarchy, I guess, and in different um, sectors being involved as well. Um, and also this ability to iterate. I think that in going back and reflecting, if we had inbuilt within our project reflection, at, you know, and learning cycles, we could have changed direction. Um, and had a greater impact with our work. And maybe it would have gone in a completely different direction to what we first intended, but it would have hopefully gone in a direction where it was feasible to create change, whether how, you know, small or large. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I was, I was gonna ask you there examples of kind of where, where it's worked really well for you, I suppose, in this, in this looking back now, you had an opportunity to rethink about it. Um, were, there, were there elements of kind of design that were embedded into the um, into the evaluation or into the partnership itself that went well um, from the beginning? Yeah, look, I think that we all had, um, because it was a co-design process, that collaboration, and so there was a lot of focus on shared understanding, um, especially in terms of the method that we were using, um, 
who would be doing what, people's roles um, within the process. Um, yeah, I think, you know, a lot of it was kind of implicit. There was no explicit sort of goal around design thinking or, you know, some of those different factors that you mentioned. And I think that's quite common for a lot of the work that we're doing. I think we're unconsciously, you know, bringing in these kind of elements of design thinking to our work without really thinking about them in a lot of depth. And I wonder if, if we did, how it would really optimize the work that we were doing. Mm, yeah, I think, I mean, you know, I think you're speaking to why this kind of this special interest group comes together. What, what happens if you start to think consciously about design and evaluation in the same space and coming at it from, from different angles? Thank you so much, Mel. I, I'm, I'm just going to ask anyone there, if you have got a question you want to speak up, do put the question out there. If you want to write it into the chat, I'll read it for you or Mel can read it too. I'll give you a moment to do that. And, Oh, Lucy. False alarm. That's okay. You don't have to have questions. If you've got them and you want to save them up, just write them in the chat and um, we'll get to them as we go through. Thanks so much, Mel. Um, I always like hearing, I mean, I think as Cam said, there's there's something quite um, theoretical about these, um, these fields of, of, of how design or how partnerships or how evaluation come together. And I, I, I particularly like that practical example of where these things come to life. Um, so that I can kind of think, oh, would I have done that too? Oh, is it, was that co-design that thing that I did or whatever it is? So um, thank you for sharing that. Uh, I'm gonna just bring my slides back up here. So, oh, look at that, I left an animation on. That was pretty snazzy for everyone too. Um, Bill and I were talking about slides before and that is why I don't usually have these animations on, but hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, I'm gonna put you into some breakout rooms for a moment and try and have a, a conversation if you're open to it. Um, the questions are up there on the, on the space and we're kind of interested if you're evaluating complex partnerships, approaches, collaborations, multidisciplinary things, alliances, um, pick the word. If you were involved in it, what would some of the benefits be of taking a design led approach? Um, and your answer might be no, none at all, and that's totally fine. Um, I'm going to um, put us into some breakout rooms for about five, six, seven minutes. I'll decide, I'll let you know when we're coming back. Um, I'd encourage you to bring your cameras on, to have a chat with your colleagues. This is one of our opportunities to talk um, to one another. I will ask um, anyone from the group to, to share back their thoughts um, at the end too. So if, you, if you're someone who feels like they want to share, do be prepared to, to share it with us as well. I'm opening the breakout rooms now. Hello, welcome back everyone. Thanks for giving that a go. Um, I mean, we, we were just discussing, I mean, we've probably all been in a lot of breakout rooms over the last couple of years. So uh, thank you for participating, getting to know one another. There's a really nice um, group of people here. So thanks for engaging. I wondered if anyone wanted to share their thoughts and reflections from that question there, where some of the benefits of using a design-led approach or design in your approach to evaluation might've been. Um, if I can't see, faces but I'll just make sure I can there we go please do just feel free to come off mute and um and, and let us know if you've got ideas or check them in the chat as well no I don't either at four o'clock on a Thursday oh that was funny though we still got lots of smiles that's good um Mel from your group I'm going to put you on the spot was anything did anything come up <laughs> Yeah, no, um, I mean, one of the things that we're talking about is the necessity to be really clear up front when you're trying to implement one of these processes with a group and, you know, that there's sometimes a lot of uncertainty about how things might unfold because of the iterative process and how there's so much work in the front end to establish those relationships and ways of working. Um, but something that also came up in our group was this question of what's new about this um, you know, in my group, there was someone who's been working in evaluation for a really long time and uh, and she shared that, 
you know, this is what she's been doing all along in her career. So mm. what is, what's really new about um, design thinking or this emphasis on learning and evaluation as it relates to MSPs, partnerships and collaborations? Yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think we would probably, everyone on the call would echo that in some way. There's, there's different words for the same things, isn't there? And we kind of see them in, in different places. Of course, how you use them and, and the approaches have actually play out in, 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 in different situations are different. But I, yeah, I mean, everything goes in and out of fashion and we have different kind of terms for it as well. Um, were there other um, reflections from anyone that would, would like to share? I mean, maybe we'll just um, riff off that because we also talked about what is the difference. Um, what is design, what, it, uh, what is added in design, um, co-design approaches that wasn't in things like participatory action research or mm -hmm. collaborative ways that have been around for a long time, some people have been using, but we were talking about, and I, I still think that prototyping is the, every, when a new thing comes around, it brings a lot of history with it, doesn't it? It brings a lot of what we've, what's been there before, but it sometimes adds a new twist. And um, to me, and we were chatting about this and to, to, to the people in the group, um, we were talking about uh, prototyping as being mm. a new addition and, um, because, and rapid cycles of testing uh, with, with, with community members. And that seems to, to feel different and present new challenges for evaluation. And that um, you have to sort of like understand that if you're going to um, work as an evaluator with that and maybe um, it means that you need to take a different approach to evaluation and some of the answers to how you mm -hmm. embed learning and evaluation into that are probably gained from understanding how you plan in, in, in chunks like agile planning, short cycle planning and reflection and rapid data collection and things like that. Mm, I think that's a really fantastic insight, Jess, and, and it is something that we see in, in partnerships as well, you know, the kind of way that that partnerships are set up to trial things. They're kind of like hotbeds of experimentation, of piloting and, and of prototyping. And I think that's certainly something we recognise with um, people coming together, particularly from different sectors, you know, where, whether it be like kind of private or industry and then government and civil society sectors coming together. There, there is a need to prototype. And I would add to that, like the fail fast kind of a mentality around it too. Um, where they need to kind of see, does this work before we make this of any scale or use or reach anywhere? Um, and certainly that's that's like a real focus for those different groups coming together. And I think you're right about the evaluation and learning aspect of it, because it changes well, it changes what you choose to evaluate um, and and changes how you how you choose to evaluate that as well. Um, I would agree, yeah, the, the prototyping is really important. Um, I'm going to just share my slides to wrap this up and then we'll move on to some, um, some forward planning. So just some, some tips to get started in this space and, and some of these things will be things that you've already seen before um, or they'll be things that you already do. Um, maybe some of them are new and then that will be counted as a tip. Um, so I suppose the first is using design or design-led approaches um, to reconsider the what, what you choose to evaluate. And here's some suggestions of the kinds of things you might choose to evaluate. So Mel talked about this a little bit before that the how the partnership is going about understanding a problem. How, how, how did it do that? What was that process that it undertook? How that partnership's ideating and prototyping, and, and Jess has obviously just spoken about that. So it's not just what is the prototype, but how, what is the process of prototyping and experimentation? How does that agree or arrive at new solutions? What's new about them? What's different about them? Um, the results then of those experiments, of testing of those prototyping, um, sessions of those rapid cycles and of course the implementation of whatever the program project initiative partnership might be interested in um i think the, and then the second point then you can read it is can change the way you go about evaluating things so you can it, it changes the way we involve stakeholders and and of course there's long histories of as you say participatory action research of of, of ethnographic kind of um studies so kind of being out of participant led of practice based all of those words uh, are connected and, and ring true, but design kind of gives us a way into perhaps reconsider the ways that we involve multi-stakeholders from different disciplines in the development and implementation of evaluations. Um, and it can shift the timing of when you decide to evaluate that kind of developmental evaluation, the, the being integrated, recognising dynamic, emergent natures of, 
of what's happening between people. You know, we don't always know where we're going. And as those things shift, we bring in different kinds of ways of evaluating and of checking that things are happening. So it kind of remove the formative summative um, world or lens. I think the thing, and I want to finish on this, this is the thing we've found most useful. And, you know, I, evaluators are always making a case for evaluation, aren't they? It's like researchers always want to do more research. Um, but one of the things that we have found to be really true is that using these kind of approaches of, 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 of empathizing, of thinking about what your users need, of prototyping, of testing solutions, they can be ways into continuously strengthening the partnership itself. So rather than just kind of, you know, doing that stakeholder map and spending all the time getting everyone together, they can really be about examining those core foundations of your partnership. Is there trust there? Is there reciprocity? Have you achieved shared agendas? Have you achieved mutual accountability? And if you haven't, why not? And how can you shift and learn to continuously develop some of those foundations? Um, so I really encourage you, if you're not already doing this, to use design um, to kind of think about strengthening your partnership as well, um, certainly for us. That is the session for today. I'm going to leave it open for one minute for questions and hand over to Jess. Um, so any questions for on any of the content from today? Perfect. It was all clear and it's all recorded. And I would encourage you to look at all of the other recordings from this week as well. There's some totally different topics um, and some great insights from people presenting on other days if you weren't able to join. Thank you very much. Over to you, Jess. Thanks so much, Nick and Cam, for such an interesting, provocative session. I've been, maybe we're all thinking about it whilst we're being a little quiet, because I'm going, oh, how could I think, how could I apply that? Oh. So yeah, very thought provoking. Thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, yeah, so we're wrapping up after this uh, week, this learning sprint, this idea of learning about the intersection of design and evaluation, which is one of the emerging areas in evaluation. And our SIG um, runs this group, volunteers run this group to get us thinking, but we're all really open to ideas about how to run this SIG and open to new members as well, if anybody wants to get involved in the organizing committee. Uh, we've been doing it for, Matt and I have been leading it for a few years. And so we're really keen to get your ideas. So the idea of this very final session, let's see how many people are left. So we've got 28 people. Thank you for hanging in there to the end of the week. Is, um, is just to have a little bit of a think about uh, apply evaluation as always to the week. And we'd love to know how you found the week, what you liked, um, what we could do better, what you might do, what you might offer and uh, ideas for you know next year so we're, we're really up for what 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 topics really um piqued your interest this this week or other things that you're hearing in your field that you'd like to know more about or ideas for building our skill set because i mean the reason why we set this um sig up was because well i believe personally quite strongly that this skill set of design thinking even if some of it's recycled and it's got some new bits, is really gaining quite a lot of space. And um, if we want to maintain our legitimacy as evaluators, we it really, really helps to get your head around it. And also, you know, design thinking seems to be offering a bit of promise to tackle really tricky problems in a way that other things perhaps haven't. So um, we want to be part of that. So this is a bit of like, how do we collectively skill up, really? How do we skill up this sector so we don't become irrelevant? <laughs> That's my fear, is if we don't get on and really understand this, that our sector will, 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 will maybe get left behind. So that's why it's so important to learn about this intersection. That's why I believe in it. Um, so I'm really keen to know what you think we can do and what we should do next. So uh, for those of you who are willing to stay on for the final stretch, we're going to do one final um, uh, breakout group. Um, maybe we'll have, let's see how many people we've got. We've got 24, about five groups, Michelle. And I have, before we break out, I have a link to share with you. Um, I have some Google Slides so that we fill out in boxes. What I would really encourage you to do uh, is to, um, oh no, let me get my link is to look at what group number you're in and then go to the right slide. So at the top of the slides, I have um, shared, let me just find the chat function. I have shared um, the number of the group. So when you go into your group, look at what number it is. There's a click. Um, so 
Uh, can you see the link there? Yep. Um, can somebody check that it's working? I'll just share my screen for a sec um, so you can see it. So can you see that? OK. So the link's working fine. Yeah, the link's working. And can you see my slides? Yeah. So the questions are, what did you like about the sprint? What could have been even better? And ideas for the future. And you'll see that at the top of each slide, there's a little black number that says group one, two, three, to only go to your group. Otherwise, you'll find some magic writing appearing and it'll get you'll get very confused. So we're going to break into the group. So please go into the slide with the people that are in your group. We're going to have five groups. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five. And we're just going to do that for 10 minutes and then we're going to regroup. So 10 minutes um, to write it down and then we'll wrap up for the week. OK, so if we could now go to our five groups, random assignment is fine. Just um, there's four, group, four groups. Four. Five. Yeah, that's fine. Just looking at the dropout. So, uh, yeah, fair enough. <clears throat> be too long. I just want to say thanks for your ideas. There's some great stuff there from book clubs. I really like the idea of a book club to a reading list, um, to thinking about the right balance of passive versus um, active ideas and like demonstrating technology and learning new tech, such as using mirror boards and things like that in the sessions. Really great ideas. We're going to take them on board. And, and the only thing I would say, the only final thing is, if any of you are interested in joining the committee, we're looking for new members please reach out and um, on this mirror board, which you still have, our contact details, um, uh, send an email to myself or uh, actually just design at aes.asn.au. I'll put that in the link now. If you wanna get involved or just let us know here, um, we would love to hear from you. And with that, I'd just like to wrap it up and I'd just like to thank everybody for participating in the week. Thank the volunteers for presenting sessions. Thanks, Nick and Cam today, Shani and uh, Joe and, and Matt, of course, who all put in their time to organise this from the committee. And um, thank Bill and Michelle and AES for hosting this forum. And it looks from the feedback that a lot, you, you've enjoyed it and you've liked things about it. There's always ways like designers always get better, iterate, improve. We've got some ideas, but I really like the book club. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll have a quarterly reading and get together and discuss. I think we should just do that. So um, I'll bring that to the committee and, um, and try and bring some of this reflective space into the AES workshop. We'll put some stuff up. We encourage you to join us at the next committee meeting if you'd like, or put your ideas on LinkedIn. If you've got an idea to present and you want a collaborator, it's always fun to present with somebody else. And that's it. That's the week. It's five o'clock. Go back to crit to your crazy, silly season. Whatever.